what's up people my name is Anton and welcome to September today I just wanted to super quickly bring you some rigid body techniques that you could use to scatter some rubble across your scene um, using some assets so I've recently been working on a few scenes where I really wanted some cool ground cover and I've got a pretty simple scene set up here with some like concrete smash tiles um, but it wasn't enough I was looking for more like rocky bricky sort of pebble scattered all over the place um, and there's a pretty cool way you can do it with literally just cloners and some rigid body stuff. Um, so it's a little similar to the cardboard boxes, except you're taking a little bit of a different approach scene wise this time. Um, and it can end up looking quite good. So I've got a super simple setup here, which is a little strange because the displacement on the plane here actually means that it's placed up here in the viewport, which is a bit of a weird one because the displacement is set to something like a thousand, which is mental. Um, but what we're going to do is obviously we're using some physics simulations, so we need to recreate this plane. We'll do that super quick. Um, maybe worth doing just by duplicating this and deleting the material. Um, we are just using some mega scans assets again, so nothing too crazy. Um, and we can just just position this here somewhere where it's replicating the floor. Um, we can just toggle this off visibility, and this is going to be our well plane for now. We can, I think, I think we've got a lot of the assets already downloaded, so we can literally head to local here and start importing a few things. I'm just going to scatter. So we've got some Tundra boulders, um, which is, oh, in 8K, we can just export those real quick, making sure we're in Octane here. Literally just head over, export. <clears throat> one by one, it'll start generating the materials. So we can take some of these for now. And what we're going to do is probably export them, clone them, simulate them, and then bake them. So it'll be a process of zooming out here, just taking a look at a hidden line. We're going to need to make sure we're hopping into each of these materials here and setting these to aces so they remain consistent. And what we can do is start cloning them, right? So we've got our camera setups. We can grab our asset, throw it into a cloner here, something a little like this, but we can move it up. Uh, we want essentially a grid shape, right, <clears throat> which it is doing, but we need more like this. I'd say probably something like that. We can just double check that our rocks aren't intersecting. Maybe set this to 300 each so they're a little more spaced out. Uh, we can apply a random effect to this so that real quick we're getting some alternate sort of like rotation and they're not all falling in uniform. So set this to 360, 360, 360. You can see just like that. Um, and even just by doing that, I believe we can just hit C to bake that now, delete the random effector, uh, make sure we're saving our file, and just right click on here, head to simulation tile, bullet tags even, rigid body, and if we set this to a collider body, we should, if we just pause this super quick, in theory, be able to watch this sort of simulate real quick. So we've got the rocks falling there, which looks cool. Um, if anything, I kind of want these to spread out a little more maybe so we can, we're working with quite a big scene here. We can even head into our camera view and sort of see what we're working with. I think maybe better if we can, we can even turn up the bounciness if we so wanted to. In fact, we may leave it like this and just zoom in our camera. So we can set this render in here. Just take a look at what this looks like. Um, which looks pretty cool. I like the way these rocks sort of look. Um, we can take this, increase our focal length, which we're probably going to do anyway, and just up our angle to something like this. Or we can or we can keep it down. Something like that. So we're getting some pretty nice angles with the light in there. Obviously, that's tweakable. But say we're happy with the way those rocks look. Obviously, they all, they all are the same rock, but if we layer some more assets, it will take the focus off that. We can cache this scene just here. So bake all. And then because we're working with a still frame in this instance, we can just find what we like. So something like this maybe. And literally connect these. Oh, connect objects and delete. Drag this out. We've got our rocks separate from our simulation there. Now what we can do is import our next asset. So say we're working, we wanted some, I've got this brick debris that I downloaded. We can export that through real quick and through a pretty similar process. We can <clears throat> get this loaded in any second. You can see it's probably generating some materials here. 
just like that. And we can do the same thing by getting a cloner, hopping out the camera super quick, finding whether the, these assets actually are. They're a little scaled down, so we need to head to here, just making sure we're scaling these up to the size that we want. And we can get a few more of these because they're quite small, right? So we can probably set this to maybe like five. You could even go about layering the, um, sorry, like different assets in here inside the cloner. So they're all exactly the same. But for now, just to, as a proof of concept type thing, this should probably work. Um, make sure we're going in here and setting this to aces. We can just like that. Zoom in here. All of these assets have quite a worn look and they should, should sort of fit together. We can take that. Uh, we deleted our random effector, but no worries. We can just create a new one here. We can go to parameter, make sure we're ticking rotation. Doing that. <clears throat> and then baking our cloner. Same thing, setting the rigid body tag up here. Our plane is already our collider, but we need to make sure we're setting the collider to these uh rocks here already too so we can play this the only thing i say about this is it's nowhere near wide enough we want a much wider spread on these bricks so if we control z or in right we actually now i was about to say we need to control z so but we can increase this maybe to 500 500 500 and we can we still want to bounce on some of these so we may well be able to well, Bullet tanks, rigid body. Make sure we got collider body back on this. See what this looks like. Looks okay, but a lot of the bricks seem to be sort of falling in quite similar places. And the fall off is a little wide. So these are the kind of things I'm looking off. I'm looking for like an even spread. Because as we layer assets, you don't want them to be super hot in one place or not visible in another, right? But even if we start playing this, oh, I feel like I kind of want more of them. So if we just quickly control Z, head back to our cloner here, set this to maybe 350, 350, 350, or rather we could set this to 200, 200, 200, and 200. And in our random effector here, we could play with the position a little bit. So we can set this to 300, 300, just to widen them out a little bit make them a little more random, and then hopefully that will give us the result we're after. So we can bake this one last time, head into rigid body here, making sure we're adding a collider body back on the rocks, play that through. And I think that's more of a result that we're after. You can see just with some simple tweaks like that, it actually changes the way the result looks. So these are bouncing about a little bit, but if we find a frame that looks good, Probably something like this. Maybe if we let this play through and then let them collide a little more. We can shoot a quick render at that. See what it looks like. So we've got some nice rocks there. We can probably... Bear in mind, we also have the ability to play with camera angles and stuff like that after this. But trying to look something that maybe maybe a bit more sort of randomized or maybe in a different position almost. Or if we were to hmm, hop out the camera here. Maybe could this give this a quick rotate. Something like that. We were to play it. This seems to sort of make them a little more visible. So if we were to show that. Got a bit of a flying brick there over the top, but if we let that settle down somewhere, we could find a frame just like this. Or maybe a little further on. Somewhere like that, I think it's good. And we could bake that again. So if we connect objects and delete, we've got our rocks there. We didn't even need to cache that. So we can keep our random effects we're about and then import a final asset. So maybe something like these concrete bricks I think I had. 
just taking a look through. There are some more rocks, but I don't want to overcomplicate the scene. Um, I could potentially add some more, but we'll see what it looks like after this. Um, you want to layer them, I'd say, almost from big to small is the way I'm thinking about it. So if I were to layer rocks on top of all this, it would sort of cover the smaller rubble. Um, obviously, you could, there are other, other approaches to this too. You can import the geometry separately and sort of place it where you like. But I, I like to use the physics simulators now that they're a lot better in C4D because it sort of gives you a level of accuracy, which looks quite cool. Um, and I've been working on some architecture projects recently where I always had some, almost had some sort of like surrealist influences um, and I had like sort of courtyards full of rubble and stuff like that. Um, and this technique sort of works really well. The rocks and megascans are great. So when it reacts to light and sort of has this, you know, almost like perfectly positioned aspect to it, um, it's quite a cool, quite cool little technique. So if we just export these one more time, it should be fairly easy for us to, Facts. I would work ahead of time, but it's important to see for D now. We're going to do the same technique as we did with the bricks. Literally grab ourselves a cloner. So any second, if we just grab ourselves a cloner like that, we're likely going to have to scale these up one more time. So if we just drag these up here, or rather the cloner itself, um, we can maybe scale these more like 555, five, five. far too big, maybe 333. Three, three. Mm, something like that looks pretty good, although the blocks look quite too, seems to be a better option, as we always do. Heading into here, making sure we're trapping it into aces. And we can now get our cloner up. So we want quite a few of these maybe. Tweaking these up and then dragging our random effect so that we've already got into there. We can space these all. That will actually bring it down a little bit. So that kind of works. We could do that. Bake these off. Billet tags, rigid body. We've got our colliders already all set up. And if all goes well, we can wave this low super quick and get our rubble falling. I'm worried that a few of these bricks may be intersecting. So the simulator crashed there real quick because we left the rigid body tag on the cloner. But if we re-simulate that now, it should be sweet. Yep, too full just like that. And that was a pretty good simulation there. So even if we head over to our camera angles, something like this looks pretty good. So we want to wait for these to settle a little more. You can even catch these in motion and start adding some motion blur like we did on the boxes, which looks pretty cool. But for now, we're trying to create a sort of very stylized rubble setup. So this looks pretty cool the way that it's balancing in the middle and or sort of on the outside here. So from this point, what we can do is literally right click on our cloner, connect objects and delete, get rid of that hard body tag and everything's baked to this still frame now. And we should be able to um, find where our fake plane was, which happens to be this one. Delete that. Re-enable our fake plane and you can see it all fits together quite nicely so from this point you can literally just go to style it up and sort of do a little bit of look developing um, I'm tempted to whack up the resolution of this a little bit so it looks nicer 2560 by 1080 always works quite well for me as sort of like a film type angle so we can zoom this out now and we can for example if we wanted to add some depth of field Head in here, head to thin lens, depth of field, untick autofocus, set the aperture to maybe maybe 20, something quite high. We could set the focus to be something here. Maybe we could increase the focal length a little bit, something like 120, or rather 100. <clears throat> and maybe we could take a different focus. In fact, now I think I think that looks pretty good. We could untick that about maybe increasing the aperture if we really wanted to, to sort of like get rid of that black in the background although i think it might be a little too much um some other stuff we can do we can literally work on the lighting maybe a little more so we've got some hdri type lighting but if we zoom in objects lights area light uh, but i feel like it would look pretty cool to have a light coming from another direction so if you're working with octane area light something i always recommend or lighting in general um, if you want to position them right, I will sort of pick something which is fairly central to the scene. So this rock, or these rocks in general, are, they're all parented together. So if you right click on here, 
go animation tags target you can pick out so say that one we can then move out the so we can see where our cameras are and you'll see the light is always always pointing in the right direction basically so that one seems to be a little high for some reason actually maybe if we pick this set this to um, some of the bricks uh, it's pointing upwards to where they were before <laughs> a bit of a weird one uh, we can let's see wait uh, let me think if it's pointing to the plane something like that okay so you're looking for something basically in the right general direction we can figure out where our scene is move it around like this sort of you can go about moving it down scaling up a little bit you'll see the effect any second but you can see we're getting a light source there which looks pretty cool um, it's all about essentially balancing the direction of where the light's coming from so you can do something like that um, you can change the warmth of this light if you're going from a more of a cooler approach or you wanted more of maybe a rising sun type you could go for something like that and you could really use that to composite in your scene or you could import you, know, you could even export this into Unreal or something, start creating some landscapes and whatnot. Um, just a quick demonstration of the kind of technique you can use um, using C4D's rigid body simulators. So, having said that, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Um, and I will see you very soon with some more stuff. So, thank you for watching.